this is the P700 and I'm going to show an example of making a print using roll paper. Now the paper I'm using is an Epson 13 inch roll, it's a Epson Premium Glossy Voto. You can get 13 inch rolls, uh, they're not so common, there's not such a wide range of uh, papers, but they do give you some interesting possibilities for a printer like this. You can make prints of any size you like, but I'm going to try making one 3.9 meters long. Uh, the specs say I should be able to make a print that size. Uh, the actual image itself I have printed at up to 14.7 meters long on a much bigger printer. But anyway, I'm using uh, the Epson glossy paper here. Uh, it comes in 10 meter rolls. So uh, it gives me two prints out of it and then a bit left over for some others. Obviously I've got to load the paper into this and the roll paper loads at the back. Um, I'll need to pull out the paper tray here for the paper to come out. But also with roll paper, I'm going to need to pay careful attention to what happens to the print as it comes out and goes onto the floor. Um, normally I'll use something to catch that and uh, we'll see the setup once I've got everything gone and it's actually printing. Here's the roll paper and the roll feed mechanism is fits in the back of the printer. Now this adjusts for paper size, takes up to 13 inch. You can get smaller rolls as well, but remember that the smaller roll paper you use, the more problems you're likely to have with curl and it can be a bit of a problem. Now when I've opened the at the back here, it's actually come up with a message telling me that roll paper cover is open. Do I want to load roll paper? Well, fair enough. I do actually want to load roll paper. So what I'm going to do is lay the roll here on this and feed it in here. Now the paper, if it's a new roll like this one, will come with a protective wrapping which is worth keeping because it's uh, sort of almost like a greaseproof paper that uh, protects the paper surface. So we'll take that off. And I now have a roll of glossy paper. Now this is not a powered roller, so you're going to have to manually rewind it yourself. But what we'll do is we'll just start by laying the roll of paper in there. It's in, there is a slot at the back where it goes and I'm going to push it in and I'm rolling the paper. By the way, clean your hands first or wear copper, uh, cotton gloves because you don't really want to harm the surface of the paper. And I'm going to push it in and at a certain point it beeps. And I push it a little bit further, but not much. You'll feel the resistance. It now says it's roll loading paper. I'm holding onto the paper here to feel for if it's being grabbed. It's quite possible for it not to load properly, particularly if you've got strong curl of the paper. So pay careful, if you've got a roll that's nearly used, it'll have quite tight curl on it. So be careful in feeding it in. Yep, the printer has got it, it's rolling in, it's bringing the paper into the printer. It's doing its usual checks that it does whenever you load a sheet of paper. And it tells me it's ready. So we now have this ready. You'll notice that it's rolled out a little bit here. I can just tighten that up a bit. As I said, there's no power roller here, so you have to move it yourself. You can leave this little flap open at the back here. Paper will just go in. There's also no cutter. So as I'll show when I've done the print, it helps to have some decent scissors. Uh, I use wallpaper scissors, uh, something that will cut this paper nice and evenly. But bear in mind, you may need to trim it afterwards. So when you set your custom paper sizes for roll 
add a little bit if you're not sure of cutting because you can always go back and trim it to the precise size. I've created a custom media size of 3.9 meters by 13 inches here. So that will take the image that I'm going to print. Now I'll move this back round, check with the computer that everything is ready to go and we'll see if it prints. I've now got the roll paper loaded into the back. It's fed through. I need to pull out the tray and hit print on the computer. I should note that it's going to take a while for the laptop to process the image with several gigabytes and it's going to take a while for data to start coming here but my trusty stopwatch is here to see how long it takes to print. Uh, I'm not even going to make a guess at the moment but we'll see what happens shortly. It's taken about a minute or so for the laptop to process the image and I say it, it is a huge image. This was originally printed at 47 feet long. Um, it's huge. Well, the printer is receiving data. It says that the ink cartridges are low and the print not may, job may not print completely. Well, I happen to know that it gives that warning rather optimistically and this is the first time it's occurred. So we will proceed. We will continue printing. The display here is now showing the name of the file. It's a Photoshop PSB file. And it's telling me that it will be ready in approximately 49 minutes. Well, we shall see. Is the print starting to come out of the printer? Now, one observation I'd make here is that the printer always adds on a bit of paper at the front of the print. Um, the bit I said about margins is for prints like this where there isn't a built-in cutter, it's just something you sort out afterwards. Um, the half inch margin I've specified above and below the print, that's come out fine. The print itself is coming out fine. Um, I know this image quite well, uh, but uh, it's going to be a while yet. Now this is looking at the dark plastic but clear top on the printer. Uh, and the print head is underneath there. And normally with printers you can't see what's going on. However, there is a light option which I can turn on. And we can actually see the printer printing. I know some people will say this sort of thing is a bit of a gimmick. I can assure you it isn't. If you do much printing, you always have an element of uncertainty when you're doing prints and you want to keep an eye on something. Great when you've done the same print 10, 20 times before and you know it's going to come out right. But if it's a new print and if you're experimenting with something, feature like this is useful. But one thing I would say is this plastic will scratch easily. Um, so take care of it. Let's switch the light off again. Here's a bit more of the print on its way out. As you can see, it's now coming over the print catcher at the front. So I'm going to have to think about where the print's going to rest. I really don't want, it's about a meter or so off the floor. And I really don't want the weight of the paper pulling it out of the printer. It should be able to cope with it, but I don't want to chance it because that can cause problems with printing, lots of detail, smudging, all kinds of problems. Far easier just to put something under here to catch the print and let it curl as it comes out. As you can see, I've now put a small table underneath the uh, printer and it's catching the print as it comes out. If you're doing very big prints, uh, you will need to pay attention to them because it may well roll and fall over off the table or something. But uh, for most people's panoramic prints, this is fine. As you can see, I've rolled the paper a few times. Leave it to take its natural curl. Um, remember the paper, although it's pretty much dry coming out of the printer, 
does need to degas and dry properly. So when you finish a print like this, uh, either lay it out somewhere or roll it up very loosely to allow the, uh, the ink to dry properly. As you can see, the ink warnings that came at the beginning of the print were perhaps a little enthusiastic. Um, I'd note that uh, it says we've got about 22 minutes left and uh, this progress bar gives you an idea of how much of the print you've printed. Uh, you'll see that the levels here haven't changed at all, other than it just wanted me to change inks and no, I'm not going to. As I mentioned earlier, do keep an eye on the print because as you can see, it's about to fall off the little wooden table. So just move that back like that and let it carry on printing. And here's the print finished, uh, although it hasn't fully ejected from the machine. The end of the print is somewhere back here. So what I need to do now is to cut the paper. And for that, some decent scissors help. There is a cut eject setting. Don't be fooled when it says cut, it doesn't, it means you do the cutting, it doesn't. Cut and eject is what I'm going to use, it uh, unloads the paper out to the back. So I'll finish this with unloading the roll of paper that I put in at the start. So I'll press cut and eject. As you can see, the print is being rolled out. Quite a way, watch it doesn't drop your print on the floor. And now I need to cut it. Just says cut the roll paper. You can set it to have a cut line on the paper, but I'll just do a straightforward cut and I can trim it later. And holding onto the print to stop it from rolling off and falling on the floor. So anyway, there is our print, which I'll look at in a minute. We now say that we're done, and you can see the paper we've drawn back into the printer. It is actually coming out at the back, as you can see. I did say there was no powered roll feed here, so we have to give it a bit of a hand. It pings. And the roll paper is unloaded. The brown paper that came off the roll is now worth putting over this to protect it. Once I've removed the paper, I can just fold this mechanism back up and it goes back into the printer. Just check all the rollers are okay. And we're done. Well, here we are. Um, here's some panoramic prints I made. Uh, the 3.9 meter one, a couple of smaller ones. It's black and white, uh, printed using the ABW print mode. But as you see, um, no difficulty in making huge, great prints. The only difficulty comes when you want to display them. So if you want to make prints this size, do think seriously about where you're going to show them, how you're going to show them, and how you're going to protect them. It is not easy getting sheets of glass or perspex or anything to this size. So. There's more about the making of this print in an article uh, about the photography behind it. And if you read the main review of the printer, I've got lots more technical details of the software I used and how everything was done. Anyway, hope that's been of interest.